She's just a, an absolute uh, star in the department and somebody that uh, pretty much every department member really looked to as, um, you know, a, a close friend, a sister. It's a horrible morning in Yolo County in the city of Davis this morning. Davis mourns the loss of a police officer who was shot and died overnight. A suspected gunman also dead. So here's what we know right now at 6 o'clock. This all started about 7 o'clock last night. Police got a call about a three-car accident in downtown Davis at 5th and D Streets. When police arrived, somebody started shooting. Officers say the shooter was later found dead inside a home near 5th and E Streets in Davis, not too far away from where the shooting and the accident happened. Police say it looks like the uh, person shot himself. 22-year-old native Natalie Corona, the police officer, died from her injuries overnight. A procession was held early this morning for Officer Corona. It started at the UC Davis Medical Center on Stockton Boulevard in Sacramento, ending at the Yolo County Coroner's Office in the city of Woodland. Officer Corona was new to the Davis Police Department. She had just completed the academy in July, started patrolling the streets in December in Davis last month. ABC 10's Carlos Herrera is live in Davis where the accident was and where the officer was shot. Carlos? Yeah, as you can see behind me, the uh, investigation here on 5th and C Street in downtown Davis continues this morning, several hours later. Take a look as this is yellow tape right now. Investigators have been centering around this area mostly. This is where the shooting happened last night. Let's take a look at what you can see right now. First of all, let's start with that uh, law enforcement vehicle, that Davis police vehicle. That's uh, the vehicle that Natalie, Officer Natalie Corona was in at the time of the shooting. Now, uh, the uh, fire rescue vehicle that you see there, that rescue engine, was also uh, involved in this shooting. You can see a flat tire there. That's because of a bullet hole. Um, a bullet that was uh, came from that shooting actually we've seen investigators walk around it take pictures and see what exactly is going on here this area blocked off will continue to be blocked off for several hours in fact uh, fifth street is closed from e to c street will remain closed for several hours now this is just one of the two scenes involved in this investigation. The other one, just a two minute walk away from here, just northeast from here, that's the home where that suspect was found with a, an, a self-inflicted gunshot wound. That's where the Davis Police Department found him. So very close by, just a two minute walk, two blocks actually uh, from here. Now, we do wanna dedicate some time and remind, uh, remember, the victim. Uh, we have a couple of photos of Officer Corona. We want to show you this recent one from the William Pioneer Review newspaper. This is from last summer when she completed the academy. Her father, a law enforcement veteran, pinned her badge on her. In fact, Officer Corona got into law enforcement because of her father's 26 year, uh, years of service in Calusa County. Now this morning, the Davis Police Department is mourning the loss of one of their own. Police Chief uh, Darren Pytel described her as just an absolute star in the department and somebody that pretty much every department member looked to as a close friend and ultimately a sister. Natalie was just full of, full of life and full of energy and just an, an absolute pleasure to be around. She loved being around everybody in the department and she just worked like you can't believe. In fact, there was a, a period of time that uh, before going to the academy that we ran out of the funding for her paid position and despite that she still came in and volunteered as a as a volunteer and put in full-time hours until she ended up going to the police academy definitely a sad morning for the davis police department and all law enforcement in this area um, we'll continue hearing from uh, the police chief and from more law enforcement officers. Right now, you're taking a look at a live scene here. Live look here at the scene right here on 5th and C Street. Lots going on. Investigators will remain here for several hours. This is just one of the two scenes in the investigation. We'll send it back over to you. And as Carlos has been showing you since 4.30 this morning, you're going to see closures. 5th Street is shut down at D Street. You can take 4th or A Street to avoid some delays. But, of course, we will update you when all lanes reopen. If you are headed out right now in Davis, traffic is moving on 80 westbound. All lanes are open straight into Fairfield. We are looking at 30 minutes.
6.05 right now. It was a really scary night for a lot of students at UC Davis and their families. The university asked people on campus to shelter in place. Again, that order is now over. We called UC Davis officials last night about the situation. Here's what they had to say about it. We're always concerned about the safety of our students, but we're confident that UPD and the UC Davis police um, are doing everything they can to keep people safe. All right, so the Davis Joint Unified School District closed some of their buildings last night, too. Those buildings are often used for night classes, adult education, and sports practices. Custodial staff also work there late into the evening. Ariane? Kirsten, during that order when people were ordered to stay in place, a lot of people grabbed their cell phones, went onto Snapchat, and shared some videos with us. A lot of it of downtown Davis looking basically barren, not a lot going on there. In this one, you can at least see the police action in the background. But we also got images from another woman, and we spoke to her last night on the LNT. She was stuck in a shelter-in-place location at a coffee shop. And when she spoke to LNT, this is what she had to say. I mean, the doors are locked, mm -hmm. so I, I'm assuming you can't really come back because right. we're just, we're extremely skeptical of the situation still, especially since we don't have that much information. And that shelter in place order that was released last night and people are now able to move about campus as they saw fit, Walt. But mm -hmm. there were some issues getting communication out on yeah. UC Davis campus. I'm going to talk to you about that later. But a lot of people are joining us on our Facebook page. They're sharing their condolences, their well wishes. Take a look at what Kimberly Reyna says. She says it breaks her heart that she is my age. She's 22, just like Kimberly Reyna, and she was taken. She says, rest easy now. May she watch over her friends and family. Being 22 and hearing about any sh shooting involving our generation hurts. Then she says, rest in peace, Officer Natalie Corona. And we have Jessica Falstrom saying how horrible for her family to not get justice or even to ask why. Mm -hmm. And then, well, look at this. We have some people posting their questions about the investigation, like John, who's curious if the officer and the suspect knew each other. I highly doubt that based mm -hmm. on what we've seen so far. And I understand the frustration right. uh, of some people who were sheltered in place, like they only at the coffee shop, Correct. with an active scene going on, and mm -hmm. you have a shooter still at large. The last thing any police department wants to do is release people from a shelter in place right. back out into the street where they don't know where the shooter is. Correct. So I think safety first. Uh, so I, I, I sense the frustration, mm -hmm. but I understand why they were sheltered in place. To John's question, it is an ongoing investigation. We mm -hmm. don't know yet if they know each other, but we will keep you posted throughout the day. Yeah, one thing we don't know is anything about the shooter Correct. who allegedly died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. So we do have Carlos at the scene. Right. We'll get more information as it comes in. Adian, thank you for pulling all that together. No of course, stay with us throughout for updates throughout Morning Blend and our website site abc10.com we have a full crew working on the story for you right now